Welcome everybody. Today's video is called Father's Day and the Kingdom of Hell. Now, many of you will say, what is the connection between those two days? They seem completely and utterly unrelated topics. Uh, well, today we're going to, you're going to discover and you're going to learn by the grace of God that uh, Father's Day, which every country celebrates, is actually completely and utterly connected to hell more than any day. Praise be to God. Amen. So please stay tuned because you'll find this uh, very interesting. So I'm praying uh, in the name of Jesus that everyone will be blessed today. And amen. And it, that, that the Holy Spirit will touch you. Amen. With a message that you will never forget in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Uh, I preached this at the church on, on Sunday. But when I preach, it's very different than when I sit here and talk. It's completely and utterly different. Praise be to God. But I'm going to try to convey to you the seriousness uh, amen, of this topic. Now, why, why do many of you go to church? You know, I, I, I go to church, but most of my experiences in church, <coughs> praise be to God, <coughs> is not actually very good. And I'll explain the reason why. Um, Revelation chapter 2 it begins with talking about to the first church, the church of Ephesus. And Jesus um, and tells this church that he knows that they persevere and they, they endure and they never faint. And they do this all for his namesake, which means they're not doing it for boasting. That is a good church. that Never faints, never weary. Praise be to God. Amen. Works hard, perseveres, doesn't give up. And they all do it for the name of Jesus. They do it for Jesus' sake and not for their own sake. But you, Jesus said, I have somewhat against thee, for you have left your first love. So my experience as the church is I don't experience the first love of God. I don't leave feeling this brother or sister loves me. Amen. With the first love of God. It's a very rare experience that I come against someone that has the first love of Christ in their hearts. So, amen. For me, or not just for me, for other people, praise be to God. It's more, um, you know, more from the aspect of uh, they're more comforted by, you know, that they get on with people or, amen, it's more cultural based where Africans tend to go with African church or, amen, uh, and for Indians go to Indian churches, not so much, uh, amen, the base of actually so loving people just for, Amen. The name of Christ. It goes, Jesus said, love one another. Not love one another, but love one another as I have loved you. Very rarely to see. And here we see the first church of Ephesus falls into that category. Where Jesus said, repent. Amen. When you're fallen, lest I put out thy light. Uh, meaning that if churches, if you don't learn to love each other with the first love of God, sooner or later your lamp will go out. Now your church may still be there. Amen. But your light has gone out. It's completely different. Churches are standing for three, four hundred years, but their lamp has gone out. Why? Because they have left their first love. Amen. They may work hard, never faint, preach for Jesus' sake, but they've left their first love. Meaning when I leave, I don't get the feeling and the comfort that people love me with the first love of God. Amen. Praise be to God. So, amen. What's that got to do with Father's Day and hell? Well, Malachi chapter, the last book in the Bible, chapter 1, God opens up and says, Israel, you say, where have you loved us, God? Amen. And what an unusual thing for God to say. God is saying to Israel, I can hear you saying, where do you love us, O God? Israel seemed to have lost sight that God truly loves them. Praise be to God. So you can see also the, the connotation with not forsaking your first love. Israel now have lost sight that God truly loves them. And God seems to accept that. God seems to understand that. Why? Well, Isaiah chapter 1, Jeremiah chapter 1, you see when God describes the temple of God, amen, God describes it in a way, God said, I have had enough of your offerings and your prayers and your Sabbath days, meaning that the church... Amen. It's functioning without the first love. And God said he's fed up with it. He's had enough of it. So he understands Israel. Amen. Saying that their experience of God in the synagogue now or in the church. Amen. Is that they can't seem to feel that God loves us. 
Amen. And that's the testimony of a lot of people today. They can feel, they can't feel the true love of God for them when they attend church. They can feel a religious love, but not the first love of God. And God seems to concur that in Malachi chapter 1. Amen. But the last verse of Malachi, here's what we bring into Father's Day. Father's Day. God closes the whole of the Hebrew Bible with this. Amen. Understanding that you don't feel the love of God. God sees it. God understands that, as he said in Ezekiel, because of the priests, my people have gone astray. Malachi chapter 3. God, the Messiah shall come to his temple and shall purge the sons of the priests, Levites, as with fire. Why? Because in Jeremiah 8 verse 8, all my priests and scribes are liars. What happens is that the people are going into the church of God and not leaving, feeling the first love of God, which God understands. But God ends the Bible saying this, but toward the last days, I will send my prophet, my servant Elijah, who shall turn the hearts of the fathers. Now watch this, Father's Day to their children and the hearts of the children to their fathers. Uh, lest I come and smite the earth of the curse. Why would God say that? God was saying, Amen, you may not feel my love in the church. And I'm talking the first love. You may not find it when you speak to the pastor, but I want your hearts to look at your children because you feel the gift that I gave you the children. You will feel my love for you inside of your little children. When I see my little children, and the gift of them, I can feel they, how they, my children look at me, how they love me, how they yearn for me to look after them. Amen. Daddy, Daddy, we love you, Daddy. We love you, Daddy. We love you. Always cuddling me, always forgiving me, always there for me, always there to wrap their arms around me. That is the love of God inside of the children, not the children. Amen. That's why God closes the Hebrew Bible said, I, I'll understand now you've lost, amen, sight of my love. You don't think I love you, but look at your children and you'll feel and you'll see my love inside of them. Praise be to God. Amen. Amen. And now if you cannot feel the love of the Father that he has for you, inside of the gift of your children, then God said, I will smite the elf with a curse. So I go to church on Sundays, uh, and many times I don't feel uh, the love of God, uh, the first love of God for me inside of the church. Uh, amen. But that doesn't stop me going to church. Uh, that doesn't discourage me going to church. Uh, praise be to God. Excuse me, I'm just going to close the window. Thank you. Thank you. So the, na the neighbors can complain about the shouting. Amen. <clears throat> that doesn't discourage me going to church. Uh, amen. <clears throat> and because I can feel the love, the first love of God had for me inside of my children. That's why Jesus, when the disciples, he was sitting there ministering and the disciples began to take away the children. Amen. And Jesus said, forbid them not, suffer the little children. I forbid them not to come unto me for such is the kingdom of heaven. Even Jesus could feel the love of his father inside of his children. Jesus knows that he knew, amen, that he couldn't feel the love, the own people who he created. The Bible said, I came unto my own and my own received me not. Jesus came to the people that he created and they received him not. But the little children, he could feel the love of his father for him inside of the children. He did not want the children to be taken away from his company and rebuked the disciples. Uh, the last verse of Malachi, Father's Day. Amen. Uh, Aye, hallelujah. If people don't love me in church with the first love, that's okay. Not okay with God, but I can bear. I'll still go to church. I'll still rejoice. I'll still encourage people because I've not lost sight of the first love that God has for me inside of my little children. I am Malachi, and it shall come to pass that I shall send my servant Elijah. And he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. 
Amen. There's no excuse for not being full of the zeal of God, for not praising God, for not clapping and jumping just because the pastor don't love you with the first love. Amen. And the congregation, amen. Shake your hands, but don't really want to talk to you. It don't matter. Amen. Because I can feel the first love of God for me and my little children. Let the father's hearts turn to that. What's God saying by that? Why is that the last verse? Because when you feed on that, then you'll want to serve God. Then you'll be full of the joy of God. Praise be to God. You won't feel discouraged. Amen. You'll have a heart of fire. Which Jeremiah said, the fire of God is shut up in my bones because my heart has turned to my children. And in them I know that God loves me. Oh, saints of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. And that's the joy. Now, what's that got to do with the kingdom of hell? Well, in the Bible, there is nothing about hell until later on. In fact, all the Torah, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, there's nothing there about the kingdom of hell. So much so, amen, that uh, many rabbis believe uh, that nobody goes to hell, eternal hell. Nobody does, even Kusto. Amen. Many of them believe that you're purged there maybe for a short while, but there is no eternal damnation hell because God didn't talk about it. When God said no to preach to, 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 um, uh, and the world before the flood, there's nothing there about him preaching about hell. When Moses was rebuking God's people, amen, he didn't tell him anything about hell. Amen. When Jacob was to talking to, amen, those he never heard him talk about hell, amen, nothing inside, uh, amen, of the Torah is there about hell. The book of Joshua doesn't talk about hell. The book of Judges doesn't talk about hell. The book of Ruth doesn't talk about hell. The first book of Kings, uh, amen, the Samuel of Chronicles doesn't talk about hell. Amen. Now, why is that? Why? Because go back to Father's Day again. The punishment that God gave to the, in, in the Torah said uh, in the Torah that the sins of the father shall be punished to the children to the third and fourth generation. God believed, amen, that what would make a man repent was not the teaching of hell. It was if the children, these children are punished. What happened is that the, the fathers will repent. Because if you love your children and you see your children suffer because of your sin, what's it going to do? You're going to repent. You're going to repent. Why? Because you love your children. And that's the most important thing. God said, surely, as God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. For God loved his son so much. God said, the most beautiful thing that I've given to man is his children. Amen. When Eve, Adam knew his wife Eve and gave birth to Seth, who was his image. Amen. God believes surely man will know. Amen. The precious joy of having a son. Jesus said he sees the son, sees the father. Jesus said, I do all things always to please my father. He that sees the son, sees the father. Amen. So God thoughts of God said surely amen when man sins and he sees the children suffer he will make them repent amen but what happened all the way up to King David what happened to King David amen maybe it was the greatest king that Israel ever had David end up having Amen. His first son was Amnon. Amnon. What did Amnon do? Rape his sister. His second son was Absalom. What did Absalom do? Kill Amnon. What else did Absalom do? Amen. Drive out David, his king, his father, and slept with all David's wives. Amen. What did the third son, Adonijah, do? Try to steal the throne from Solomon, who the throne was given to her. What does Solomon do? Kill Adonijah. What does Solomon do? End up backsliding and setting up temples of gods in Israel. Why did that happen to David's son? Because David ended up having many wives, which God won in the Torah, Deuteronomy 17. And what happens is the heart now begins to move away from the children. And then God began to bring in the message of hell. If you can't stop smoking, and you've got little children, 
then you need the message of hell. Praise be to God. If you don't care for your children, you die young, leaving your children there, people that love you there. Amen. You couldn't do it because your children. They got happened is our hearts now have lost sight. We step into the curse. That if our hearts can't turn to our children, you can't eat well. And you've got little children and you're overweight. You can't eat well. You might be there for your children. I don't want to grow, die when I'm 55, 56, 57, 60, and I've got little children that need me. No way. I'm going to eat healthy that I'm there for my children. Amen. I will send my servant Elijah that will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. But what happens in the church today? You've got people praising God, people prophesying and reading the Bible and speaking in tongues and way overweight. And many of them end up dying of strokes and heart attacks and they didn't think about the children and they stepped into the curse without even knowing it. Just because you go to church, it doesn't it make you escape the curse. If your hearts don't turn to the welfare of your children, you can talk about Jesus you can prophesy you can speak in tongues but Jesus said depart from me you that work iniquity I know you're not your heart couldn't turn amen for your children that need you and that's what God saw that was lacking if King David's heart who was so anointed couldn't turn around amen hallelujah and he prayed for the welfare of his children hey, hallelujah Amen. From having many wives, sir. Uh, then God now began from Solomon to talk about uh, the doctrine of hell and not before. Praise be to God. Amen. What has happened? We're living in a world today. The people have lost sight of the importance of their children, how much they need us. They need us to stop sinning. They need us to stop. Uh, amen. Uh, it's, uh, serving ourselves. They need us to say amen, to see us pray, and they need to see us call upon God. They need you to be there and not to die because you dug your own graves with your knife and fork. Amen. The sin of gluttony is a deadly sin. The sin of gluttony means you're eating beyond what you need. The Bible said, God, amen, 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 get supplies all our needs and not our greed. Smoking is not a need. It's a fleshly greed. And it could kill you and leave your children without you. Now you step into the curse. Amen. And that's what King David did. I was saying this to condemn you. King David himself did it. Uh, and there was chaos inside of his family. And that's why God said enough. And then God from Solomon began to teach the doctrine of hell. Now you see Father's Day is completely connected. Uh, praise be to God. Uh, amen. To the doctrine of hell. And then it begins in Solomon. Uh, Amen. Why Solomon? Why Proverbs? Why? Because it's a wise thing to believe in hell. Amen. Uh, yeah, Solomon begins to talk. And I'm not going to go into it because if you want to know about hell and all the scriptures, I've talked about it in another video. Amen. Which I've talked about. Amen. Hell. If you just type in Rabbi Elijah Michaels and type hell beside it, you'll see that video which I go into all the scriptures talking about why there's a hell. But I just wanted to Amen. Stop here and to show you the connection with Father's Day and with hell. God didn't want us to talk about hell. God believed, amen, that we would stop sinning when we saw our children begin to suffer. Amen. When you see your children begin to smoke or begin to drink or begin to go wayward and wild. Amen. Curse and swear. Amen. Be addicted to computer games. That will make you seek God. Begin to call upon God. Begin to say, Lord, remove the smoking from me. I need my children. Amen. To have a good example. Please help me, Lord. I repent. I don't want my children to end up in hell. Hallelujah. But it didn't with David, it didn't, it didn't. Man begin to lose sight, even King Hezekiah. Amen. When he was being punished, God said to King Hezekiah through Isaiah the prophet, I will not judge 
this judgment in your days, but I'll do it in your son's day. Or the Hezekiah said, oh, good, as long as it's not in my day. And that was a great king. They lost sight, amen, how their sin will affect their children. Hallelujah. Amen. So God, from Solomon's time, begins to talk about the kingdom of hell. And that's why Jesus uh, in Matthew 8, uh, amen, uh, uh, begins to talk about, uh, or is it Matthew 18? Matthew 8 or Matthew 18, Jesus says uh, that uh, that many shall come from the east and the west uh, and shall sit down with Abraham in the kingdom. But watch this, but the sons of the kingdom shall be cast into outer darkness. What does that mean? Sons of the kingdom mean your children. Amen. The children that were brought up in the church, uh, the children that were brought up in Sunday school that should have been saved end up in hell. People could store. Why? Amen. Because the parents' hearts have not turned to the children. Amen. Uh, praise be to God. We need to come up higher. Paul said, remember Paul said, I have not yet apprehended, but I strive towards the high calling. We need to strive towards the high calling. This in Christ Jesus. We need to suffer. Paul said, oh, that I might know him and the fellowship of his suffering to pick up your cross. And if you do that, God will look after your children. What did God say? And this promise to you and your children's children that are far off. Your children may be far off from God. They may be lost. Amen. But if you turn to God with all your heart, this promise shall go to you and your children that are far off, no matter how far they are away. Praise be to God. But sadly, remember in the scripture, the kingdom of hell only came in because fathers lost sight of the love of God that God has for them inside of the children. I can feel, it's not idolizing children, I can feel that God loves me inside of my children. Not the children, it's His love. And God wants you to find that. You must find it. Because if you don't find that first love, what happens, you'll be like the church of Ephesus, where Jesus said, repent, for once you're fallen, lest I come and I put out thy light. Let me read for you. An account of Mary Baxter, amen, called the divine revelation of hell. She goes to hell and she sees people in hell and um, begins to describe, uh, amen, uh, their experiences. What we need to hear, remember Revelation said this, that the smoke of their torment rises up. Uh, we, uh, we, we'll see the torment smoke forever when we get to heaven. And we need to see it, we need to understand what it is that we have escaped from. Amen. And, uh, and, 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 and that you don't want the sons, your children, to end up there. So this is what this woman says. A woman's voice said, Help me. I stared into a real pair of eyes, not the burned out sockets which were marks of burning. I was so sad, I shivered, and I felt such pity and sorrow for this woman. I wanted to badly pull her out of the cell and run away with her. It's so painful, she said. Lord, I will do what is right now. I once knew you and you were my savior. Our hands clenched the bars of the cell. Why won't you be my savior now, Lord, please? Big pieces of burning flesh fell for her and only bones clenched the bars. You even healed me of cancer, the woman said, burning in the fire. You told me to go and sin no more, lest a worse thing came upon me. I tried, Lord. You know I tried. I even tried to witness for you. But Lord, I soon learned that those who preach your word are not popular. I wanted people to like me. I slowly went back into the world and the lust of the flesh, and they devoured me. Nightclubs. And strong drink became important than you, more important than you. I lost touch with my Christian friends and soon found myself seven times worse than I had before. And though I became lovers of both men and women, I never intended to be lost. I did not know that I was possessed by Satan. I still felt you call upon my heart to repent and to be saved, but I would not. I kept thinking I still had time tomorrow. 
I will come back to Jesus and he will forgive me and deliver me. But I waited too long. Now it's too late, she cried. Her eyes burst into flames and disappeared. I screamed and fell against Jesus, oh Lord. I thought how easy this could have been me or my children or one of my loved ones. Please sit and wake up before it's too late. Amen. Praise be to God. And that is Father's Day. That with the message of hell should make us try harder. Seek God more. Love the Lord with all your heart. Don't be like the church of Ephesus that have left your first love. Amen. And what end up happening is the sons of the kingdom, like Jesus said, will end up in hell. Praise be to God, because we forgot the value of like, like Elijah, with, with the message Elijah will preach us, Malachi said, he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the children's hearts to the fathers, lest I come and I smite the earth of the curse. And what's the curse? The kingdom of hell.